Greetings, folks, and welcome back to part two of my Nakamichi 480 video. Now, before we get started on this, you guys are going to have to let me know whether or not there are too many ads in this video or the previous videos or whatnot. I just got monetized basically a couple of weeks ago, and I'm still trying to get used to uh, the whole ad situation on YouTube. Personally, I can't stand ads, so I'm trying not to deluge you with too many of them, but at the same time, uh, this hobby is expensive, so I kind of want the uh, channel to start paying for these decks as soon as possible, so yeah, just let me know what you think about the, the ads in these videos, and if there are too many, or if you can stand them, or whatever. Anyhow, before we really get into servicing the front part of this transport, where I expect I'll start losing whatever good feelings I had at the end of the... Uh, previous video after I start trying to fight with these pinch rollers, but uh, before that I wanted to uh, give you an update as to uh, the cam motor and how the rebuild went. Basically once I got this thing apart the commutator was disgustingly dirty. However, I would like to uh, mention right now that this is not the same type of motor I found in the BX150, so there is actually nothing to solder in there in terms of the brushes. You can skip that part if you're doing one of these. But, uh, yeah, the commutator was exceedingly dirty. It was just totally black. Basically, what I did for this one was I learned from the uh, Pioneer real motor rebuild, and I decided not to use the Dremel on this one. I broke out the drill instead, and if you've never seen my drill, and you probably haven't, it's enormous, but it also... In gives you much finer control of the uh, speed of the the drill so yeah I had to use it yeah I polished up the commutator real good I had to do it go over and do it again because I remembered after I polished it I forgot to scrape out the commutator gaps so when I was doing that I put a nice big gouge into the commutator itself and I had to polish that back out but uh, yeah as of right now the dead spotting is gone it's running fine I don't see any problems with it, and hopefully I don't have to get in here and do the same thing with the real motor, but uh, I will let the deck itself tell me it needs that before I try to do that again. So yeah, in the future I'll have to do another uh, motor service on camera just to implement the or show you the things that I've implemented as far as me learning stuff, but uh, yeah, as far as the eject mechanism goes, I'll show you here, it is still working. Still holding up. It ejects every time. Sarcophagus is in good shape. It's holding. So no need to go in with a rivet nut just yet. But uh, yeah, the uh, door mechanism itself is in need of lubrication badly, so we'll be doing that. And uh, yeah, this shouldn't be too hard. I gotta replace one belt here for the counter. This one's real stretched. And yeah, deal with the uh, the sticky pinch rollers. This one's fine. This one's all seized up again. I mean, completely seized up. There was no fixing this without taking it all apart and regreasing it. So uh, I'm gonna say if you're just getting into Nakamichi for the first time and you want something affordable, well, first off, you're not getting anything affordable from Nakamichi, but uh, yeah, this is not the transport you want to deal with if, you, if you're just getting into this brand for the first time. I'm going to say if you want a Nak, get a BX100, 125, 150. One of those, Sankyo Transport, much easier to deal with than this one. One thing I wanted to touch on before we really get into this part is you see this spring here? That funny looking U-shaped one, that's responsible for the deck going into record and play mode. And what you want to make sure is that this linkage is moving freely. Right now it's in play mode. This is record mode. And you just want to be sure that this is moving freely. If it's not, regrease it. Mine's doing fine, so I'm not planning on doing anything to it. On this model, I'm just doing basic service only. 
I'm not going to go in and replace a bunch of good grease. And this is full of good grease, mostly. There's some bad grease, like in the door mechanism, but uh, yeah. If you do go in and regrease this whole assembly here, do not put anything on the spring itself or on these pivots here. This is a very delicately balanced spring here. You want it to be moving absolutely freely and with no friction modifiers whatsoever in there. So no grease goes in here. Just put it on dry like this. This is the pivot you want to grease and you want to grease in here and possibly this this big plastic gear here, but uh, don't put anything on the spring itself. Or you're possibly in for a bad time. But uh, yeah. What I will be doing today is, well, like I said, we gotta free up these pinch roller pivots and uh, pinch rollers need a good cleaning as well. And I'll probably try to take off this sliding plate here to grease it just like we did with that big A and B unit last week. I want all of this stuff moving freely. But, uh, yeah, I suppose we best get started, haven't we? I can put you off to the side here so I can work. I'm using exposure compensation again to lighten the uh, exposure so you can see better. And uh, we have a uh, spring to get rid of first thing here because we got to take the door off don't we I hope I'm wide enough awake to do this and yeah it's going to be fun fishing that spring back out of there later but uh, we'll manage I'm sure I'm going to try to pop the uh, door off from this side and yeah I still cannot believe that a and D unit sounds as good as it does. But uh, on that subject, I will mention that I have found a third component as to why the wow and flutter on that machine is so high. It's something I overlooked predictably. It's a mechanical issue. But uh, we're not dealing with that today. We're dealing with this guy today. Let's see, does this need to be released. Oh yeah. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I'm just going to let this pull out, I think, this linkage. Or actually, wait, I can't do that. <clears throat> We've got to pull this clip off. And like I said in the last video, you just pry those off. See if I can find an appropriate prying tool here, aka screwdriver. I don't like these clips at all, I gotta tell you. I'd say I hope I never see them again, but I, I'm sure I will in the process of uh, continuing with this channel. All right, off comes the clip. I'm just going to push this back in so it's out of the way. Bear with me, guys. I haven't done one of these classic knack transports ever, so I'm learning as I go. I'm going to free up these wires while I'm at it. Okay, and we've got washers on either side of this uh, door assembly here, or at least on one side. I don't see one on the other side. It's probably stuck to, uh... well, no, I don't see it there either. Whatever. Washer on one side, no washer on the other. Maybe it'll turn up. Maybe there was no washer to begin with. Anyhow, we've got access to the... Uh, front plate now and we're going to take off the uh, the beauty panel here and while I'm at it I'm going to put this uh, clip somewhere or I can keep track of it now when it comes to using the actual alignment tool that I'm going to be using you have to have that beauty cover off anyway but uh, 
usually what I like to do before anything else is to uh, use the alignment tool now to see how well lined up the, uh, the machine is from factory. But it's going to be difficult because the pinch roller pivots are absolutely frozen on this. And I was not able to free them up the way I was able to on the A and D unit. Which, by the way, I prefer that transport to this one vastly. It's tedious to service, but uh, Akai really knew what they were doing when they designed that transport, I gotta say. Basically, it goes in here in place of a cassette, like so. And this is the exact thickness required to uh, make sure everything's lined up here. And I'm going to need my flashlight. I'm just checking the guides right now. I'm not checking the heads. And you hold your checking bar against the, uh, the surface of the gauge. If we can find a good angle to do this. And hopefully your gauge doesn't come undone while you're trying to do this. This is hard to do like this, but... This gate, or this, uh, this entry guide is not perfectly aligned from factory. So either this is, this pinch roller has moved or the knack factory didn't do their job properly. It's pressed in too far. How about this other gauge? This one's a bit easier to see. I think it may not be in focus. Let me see if I can get you down here to see what I'm seeing. Okay, we're checking the exit guide now. And these gauges are a huge time saver when it comes to uh, dual capstan transports like this, especially ones that don't have the exit guide on the heads themselves. All right, that guide's lined up. It's just the factory screwed up over on the other side is all. So yeah. We can't actually check the uh, head height right now because the deck isn't in play mode, but uh, that's basically a general pre-service check for me. We'll get her lined up. You just wait and see. All right, now you're probably wondering about this. Uh... I shouldn't have zoomed out, should I? Anyhow, you're probably wondering about this little metal dealy over the head. Well, that's a pad lifter. What that does is it presses upwards on your uh, felt pad in your cassette, and this allows the deck to take over all tension duties between the, the two capstans. Basically, it, it eliminates that felt pad from the equation and just allows more precise tape tension. This is the only deck I have with such a feature. It's really not necessary, but uh, it's kind of nice to have anyway. Now I'm going to shut you off real quick and I'm going to get the microscope out and we're going to see what the head looks like. <gasps> well folks, you saw it right there. I got ripped off on this deck. Big time. This deck is officially a parts deck. I don't see any use for it other than that. That head is just too badly corroded. I wish I hadn't spent 300 bucks on this thing, but I did, and we're going to get it working regardless. I was worried about that, but uh, whatever. What I'm going to try to do on this head is to uh, polish it with the auto saw. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't even know if I can because of the pad lifter, but uh, yeah. This is not leaving a good taste in my mouth. This is... Well, it's a parts deck. It's just not good enough to restore. But uh, let's continue on and see if we can make any more progress with this thing. Now, what I'm noticing is it's actually quite easy to deal with the... 
Now what's going on over here? Oh, we got to change that belt anyway, so I'll worry about that later. Anyhow, I'm noticing it's actually really easy to remove the head block on this thing. Just two screws on this on each side of the uh, the head bridge here and everything comes off it looks like. So that's good. We shouldn't be messing up any alignment or anything just by taking this off. And we have to take it off in order to service these pinch rollers. But yeah, in a way, I'm kind of relieved about the head condition on this thing because now I don't have to worry about screwing up. I'm probably never going to be buying another transport based on this, or, or deck based, based on this transport, but uh, who knows. I actually caught myself looking on the, from Japan the other day at a uh, dragon that was up for sale, a broken one. And I thought, oh, 800 bucks. I could see possibly finding my way clear to, to doing a dragon if I can get one for that cheap. But uh, no, it did not stay that cheap. It quickly got into rip-off prices and... Uh, by the time the auction was over, it went for 1600 bucks, and I'm sorry, that's not going to happen here. I don't like the dragon enough to do that. I barely like the dragon at all. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Just taking a look here, real quick, to see how hard it's going to be for me to try and get into the here to polish the head. I think the pad lifter actually comes off. Yes, it does. Good. Because I'm going to have to take that off in order to try and polish that up. And here's our erase head here. I think I'm going to be disconnecting this, actually. So I'm going to fire up the soldering iron. We need it on anyway in order to get these pinch roller pivots off. I'm just taking a look real quick here at the grease. And it could possibly use refreshing. I don't think I'm interested in doing it anymore. There, this way we don't have to worry about the uh, the erase head and whatnot, and I can just put the uh, the head down here for polishing. And I'm not going to be using power tools on this. I'm just going to be using elbow grease. I'll just go in with as many Q-tips and with auto saw on them as possible, and we'll try to bring that back around. But uh, I think this is this head is probably beyond saving at this point. We'll see. I'll I'll try. That's all I can promise. So I'm going to put this off to the side for now, and we got to deal with this crap. Yeah, that is not going to move easy. So, what we've got to do is disconnect some springs first of all. So I don't know what my 10,000 subscriber special is going to be at this point. On one hand, I do have this to use as a parts deck now. But on the other hand, I don't want to screw with this transport. Okay, now we got to get these god-awful collars off this thing, and thank you very much, Nakamichi, for doing that. Uh, first, we're going to have to dissolve the, uh, the paint lock on that thing. I'm going to use acetone for that. I'm just going to go in with a acetone-shaped Q-tip, and we're just going to hold it there until it dissolves. It's already dissolving, I can kind of tell. That may get her done, I don't know. I don't want to go too heavy-handed with the acetone. And like I keep telling you guys, acetone is no bueno for plastic, so don't get it on plastic. 
I'm trying not to. But yeah, I kind of had a feeling maybe the the head quality was possibly going to be not so good after uh, taking a look at just how much junk was on the cap stands on this thing. All right, now to get this collar off, we're going to try the paper clip trick. I have several different varieties of paper clips here. And the idea is to squeeze a paper clip into the gap on this collar so we can try to release it. And it's not really in a good spot for me to do that now, so I'll just swivel it around a bit. And that should get it off. Yes. Easy peasy. Now, this is not going to move without heat. I can already tell you that. There is just no way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the soldering iron and we're going to hold it on the side of the, uh, the pinch roller doohickey here. I'll move this so you can see what I'm doing. And we're just going to let the spring pressure push that off. And I just realized I'm forgetting something important. Before we get that to move, I'm going to show you exactly how I plan to do this without uh, using the alignment gauge. It's kind of late to be doing this now, but uh, I can still do it. So basically what the plan would be is to uh, remove the sliding bar here, if I can get it off. Two more of these god-awful clips. Yeah, that comes off easily enough. Now, the idea is you want to be able to measure from some point on this arm down to some other fixed point here. And you can do that in a couple of ways. I was going to use the caliper, possibly, to go like this. If I can get my measurements straight, and we can do it like this. I get 5.9 millimeters this way. Or the other way, the, the way I thought would probably work better, is to use my feeler gauges. If I can hold this steady here. And just kind of go in like this and just deduct feelers until I get this in here. So basically the, the plan was to just leave this stack of feeler gauges like this, sitting off to the side, and then when I reinstall this, I just push it down until I hit that gauge. However, we now know that this was off from the factory, so uh, yeah, that would have gotten in, it in the wrong way. And I just found the, uh, the washer, I think, for the that one side of the the door mechanism. So I'm going to put this over there, I think. Yeah, I believe that's where it's from. Okay, now we got to get this pinch roller off so we can service it. And I'm missing a clip. Where did that clip go? Oh, well, I'm loving this today. This isn't sucking at all. Okay, that clip is for something else. Missing a clip. Always what you want to do with one of these things is lose all your clips. Oh, just found it. Fell down onto my pants leg. Wonderful. Okay, now we can get this uh, pinch roller to come off. At least I hope we can. See if I've got it so you're you're able to see. And we're just gonna hold the, the soldering iron until the spring pushes it off. However long that takes. You don't want to use too much heat, otherwise the post will come off from the underneath. But we don't have to worry about that because we built a little sarcophagus around it. And that must be really gummed up. 
Okay, it's starting to loosen. Okay, it's gonna come off now. And I wanna do it before it's gummed itself back up again. I'm just using a little pressure here to help the spring along. And off it comes. Boing! No springs! <laughs> we got it off and now we can service this uh, pivot. And man does it need it. And we cannot use acetone on there because of the, uh, the nylon underneath. Ain't that wonderful. I'm having so much fun today. Isopropyl alcohol. That's all I'm using. I should be able to use acetone through the middle of the uh, pinch roller pivot on the other side because there's no plastic there. But here, we absolutely have to use the safe stuff. And I hope this video does good for my channel because otherwise I spent entirely too much money for this thing. There's no arguing otherwise on this thing. So yeah, based on how I'm feeling about Nakamichi right now, I think the uh, 10,000 subscriber special, I'm going to have to try and find the money for one of the uh, the Grail models on my list, like the CR7 or ZX7 or ZX9, something along those lines. I was thinking maybe a 682ZX, but uh, a 682ZX will have this transport for sure. There's not even a question about that. So uh, I just don't see what other people see in Nakamichi at this point. But yeah, this other pinch roller is moving well. That one's not going to fight. No need to build a sarcophagus around the other side there. It's fine. I'm going to dip my pipe cleaner in the acetone. I'm just going to run it through like so. And that should clean out all the old oil or grease. There's no oil in there. And I've heard some people will go back with oil instead of grease in this application, but I'm going to grease. Oil tends to run out over time. I don't want that. Alrighty then, that should be clean. I'm just going to go in without the spring for now. And I'll see how free moving it is. Oh yeah, it's going to be fine. I want to get this pinch roller off and service it as well. We can do it now, I guess. I will be doing the other side the same way, possibly. Possibly, or probably, off-camera. We'll see how I feel about it. I just lost that e-clip. So that was easy to find. It was on my pants leg. Again! I got lucky pants on today, I guess. All right, pinch roller is off. We've got two washers, one on each side of the pinch roller. I will take said washer off this side. Looks like we've got a brass bearing on this one, so I will be oiling this instead of uh, greasing it. I'm going to clean this with isopropyl alcohol first. I want to do this first, actually to clean off all the old oil. And the new oil is going to be the Anderol. I don't know why I'm doing that at this point, considering the head condition. While I'm at it, I'm gonna clean this, uh, this guide as best I can, because all of these have to be clean. Okay, I'm gonna give the pinch roller a once over with the uh, isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm going to go back in right away with distilled water and clean it real good that way. 
There is a lot of garbage coming off this thing, I'll tell you what. But yeah, this thing will play when I'm done with it, but uh, I may not even do a record and play test on this thing if I can't bring that head back around. Actually, I'm going to do this one more time with the isopropyl alcohol. Because there's just so much garbage on that pinch roller. Okay, now we're going in with the distilled water. It's actually It actually probably would be best if I... Uh, left these sitting overnight in soapy water or something like that and reconditioned them that way. But uh, having seen the head on this thing, no, I'm not wasting any time on this. It is a little bit hard and glazed, but it'll do the job. Now just a kiss of Anderol on that and that's already too much. So I'll absorb some with a Q-tip. On goes pinch roller. On goes washer. On goes, goes the E-clip that tried to escape. All right, I think I got her. Yeah, I think that one's good to go. So I was debating on how to put this back together. I'm not exactly sure if there's a real good way to do this. Because we have to be able to adjust this thing up and down on the uh, shaft. So I don't know, maybe I get the alignment gauge on it now and put this on properly so I can pull a uh, paper clip off right away. Kind of thinking maybe that's the way to go about this. Then I'll just do this, this other side the same way. One side at a time until we get this uh, done. All right, we'll put this... Uh, on and we'll try to to line this up. But first, I got to get some grease on there, and I'm just going to go with Molly Coat EM30L as usual. Best thing I got for such a thing. And let's see, how am I going to do this? I want to spread the grease around, so I'm going to use my fingers. I think. I don't mind that some of it's coming off on my fingers. We don't need to use much anyway. Now this is going to be fun. But at least that thing's going to move up and down when we're done with it. All right, I'm gonna grab my locking collar here. Put it on like so, and we're gonna try and line this up. Bingo, first try. I can't believe it went on that easy. Let me paint lock it real quick and we'll continue. And yes, I am paint locking with green nail polish. And now we've got the worst pinch roller done. It's gonna be easy from here, I hope. 
put my alignment gauge off to the side so I don't break it or something. And yes, I will be double checking this before I put this back together just to make sure that it's still in alignment. But it was off from the factory, so who cares at this point. Now I gotta do this other one. Ah, oh, crap. I just realized something. I gotta undo this and do it all over again because I didn't put that washer back in. I assume that washer was for something else. And it's right there. Great. Okay, so that was easy enough to do the second time around. Not saying I want to do it again anytime soon, but it was easy enough to do the second time around. So we got to do this other one now. And why are these colors always in a bad spot for me to get the paper clip into? Now that one doesn't want to move as easy, so we can't even do it that way. I'm going to have to go all lefty on you. I don't need my hockey stick. I need something I can unclip this. And by hockey stick, I mean this uh, dental pick that's shaped like a hockey stick. Came in handy with the A&D unit, but... Uh, it's too big to get this e-clip off. And where did that one go? Oh, there it is. Caught that one in the nick of time, it looks like. And this pinch roller is seized up on the shaft. Definitely needed that done. Just get the uh, washers off there. Let's see, I need yet another pipe cleaner, I guess. I probably should have done this on the other pinch roller, but I didn't. But this one actually has to be done like this. Pipe cleaner through the middle of the pinch roller. Because uh, it was seized. It needs new grease. Washer goes on first. I repeat, washer goes on first. Washer does not stick to outside of shaft. Washer does not piss me off, because washer will regret it if it does. Get on there, you little brat. One drop of Anderol on there. As before, I will absorb some of it with a Q-tip. And I will leave that sit, because I just remembered I forgot to clean the... Uh, pinch roller itself. This machine has all of the hours on it. It's not just high hours, it's incredibly high hours. All right, I gave it a decent pass with the, uh, well, five decent passes with the uh, isopropyl alcohol, and now we're doing the uh, distilled water. Just so it doesn't dry out. That's the one thing about isopropyl alcohol. You use it too much, it dries out these pinch rollers. And then they start cracking, and then you're shopping for new pinch rollers. But I think we got this one good enough now. Much better. I don't think this has been serviced in ages, if it's ever been serviced at all. I mean, this is the polar opposite of the, the AMD machine. which I'm very thankful for, because the A&D machine cost a bloody fortune to get. But yeah, similar problems, but uh, much different outcomes, I guess. The A&D machine is also high hours, but uh, the A&D machine happens to have no headwear that I could tell. All right, where's my checker bar?
about there should do it. It's a little too far in. Part of the problem is remembering I need to put pressure on the actual collar itself in order to uh, get the right height setting on this guide here. Got it. And like I said, we are going to double check both guides. That one's good. And we'll try the other one. We're set, we're good. Paint lock the god awful collars. Again, why they couldn't just go ahead and use a nut like every other manufacturer. And like they themselves used, I don't know. And no, let's reinvent the wheel. Let's piss off the, the tech servicing these things. Yeah, I'll just throw some token molly coat in there. It'll work its way in. Yes, Nakamichi makes great heads. No, this is not one of them. It was at one time. But that time is clearly past. That time has come and gone for this unit. It's never going to be like new. Let's see here. How do I put this back on? Oh, I forgot some molly coating. Gotta do this little mechanism over here as well. Not too much, but we just need enough to keep this brittle old plastic from breaking. All right, let's see how she works. If she works. I guess I gotta disengage it from that. It'll work fine, I'm sure. Well, I guess fine is relative in the case of uh, the head condition on this thing, but whatever, it'll be okay. As long as I can get that head polished up to a little bit, get all that corrosion off, it might do all right. It might still suck. It'll probably still suck. But it won't suck as bad, is what I'm saying. Why couldn't the other one have gone on that easy? Good grief. All right, one last little dab of molly coat, and I realize that's not a dab, but... It'll do. Just want to get a little bit of grease on this post here where it pushes on this other pinch roller. Okay, next step is put some springs on. This one I had to kind of deform a bit, but it should go back on well enough. If I can get it on. Buy a Nakamichi, I said. It'll be fine, I said. Let me get the other one on first. The other one's not deformed. Well, I guess it kind of is. It's been under constant spring tension since 19 dickety two, I'm sure. All right, there we go. Now we can screw around with the, the head. I'm not looking forward to this at all. Get out a pile of Q-tips. Where's my head? Here's my head. Attached to my shoulders. Here's my other head. The one we're going to work on now. 
And this is about as close up as I can get you on this. My apologies, I'm gonna remove the pad lifter. Set that off to the side. And I just got some grease on a pinch roller here. Let me get that off real quick before I lose track of it. I would love to go and get my magnifying lens doohickey here so I could see this better, but if I do that, it'll be in your way. So, let me get my microscope ready here. I'm just going to check again real quick to be certain this wasn't a, my imagination playing tricks on me. No, I wasn't imagining things. That head is terrible. So let's get started. I've got, I got the auto saw right here. I wouldn't do this unless I absolutely had to, and in this case I, I do absolutely have to. So I'm just going to do this until I hopefully get this head to clean up. It might still sound good. Probably not. I'm just going to check every so often with the uh, microscope here. Oh, you know what? That's, that's actually much cleaner already. Hard to see because uh, still got some of the polish on it, but... This might come back around. Just taking another little look-see. Okay, I'm going to clean the polish off the head, and then we'll see if, it, if that actually did the trick right there. That might have actually done the trick. I need to be able to see the head in order to tell. Yeah, the worst of it's gone now. I've just got a little bit more, or no, maybe I don't. I should be videoing this, let me do that. I'll have the microscope do video now. Okay, so here's the head condition as it stands after a couple of passes with the auto saw. Yeah, that is much, much better. Can I zoom in at all? Let me see if I can. I think this is the best this microscope will do. Yeah, I'm gonna call it there. We got her. I think this is going to work. Is it going to sound good? Well, ask me again when we're actually doing the record and playing test. Afterwards, I mean. For now, I'm going to continue to clean this up and get rid of the excess auto saw. Yeah, I'm not disappointed with my purchase anymore. I needed this experience to deal with the, uh, or to see how to deal with heads like this without lapping them. And I think this one's going to be all right. I'm going to try to be optimistic. I could keep going with the auto saw and keep polishing, but uh, I kind of want to stop before I do too much damage to the head because you're, you're taking away material off the head, right? So you don't want to do too much of that. All right, that might do the job. And like I said, as long as you don't disturb any of these gears up front, you're not really knocking the azimuth off at all or whatnot, but we're gonna have to check it because the factory was off on that one pinch roller. 
But uh, yeah, you can see exactly where on this uh, head block assembly the the extra heads would go for a three head operation. And then in, when it comes to uh, the auto azimuth stuff that the Dragon has and uh, the 682 ZX has, all of that goes on sort of a plate that goes over top of this. So yeah, I might go ahead and do the uh, the 682 ZX for the next one. Because like I said, I do kind of need to uh, have another deck based on this transport so I can use this one for parts. All right, I think we might be in the gravy with this thing now. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Probably not. Where did this wire go? I'll have to review my footage. I'm kind of tired doing this today. Or kind of too tired to do this today, I should say. How about I just go eat some hay and make things out of clay and lay by the bay? What do you say? And don't say, hey, shooter, haven't you forgotten your nine iron? Because, uh... I'm not shooter and I haven't forgotten my nine iron. All right, head block going on. I forgot something important again. I forgot to reconnect the erase head. Ah, I'd lose my head if it weren't bolted on. I shall reconnect that now. Yes, I shall. There we go, now we're good. Now we can keep putting this back together. And I'm just noticing there is a locator pin on each side of this uh, bridge assembly here to hold it in place. I didn't notice that at first. I'm glad I had to take that off again in that case. I guess that's how they intend you to make sure that it goes back on with the same alignment that it came off in. But like I said, the supply pinch roller was off from the factory. You were saying, what about Nakamichi quality? Don't get me started. All right, now next step. Let's see, do we do belt now or do we do the shutoff lamp now? I just turned off the soldering iron, so uh, let's do the belt now. I hope I've got one. Uh, I need my hockey stick. All right. What kind of a belt we got going on here? I noticed it was loose, but uh, it's kind of what you want anyway for the counter belt. 118.3... Double that for internal circumference. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to find a belt. All right, let's see if I've even got one in my 0.07s for this. The 0.07s are obviously smaller than the one that was on there. So I'm kind of worried about this now. because we need this to be able to drive more than one belt here. That's 113, it might do. Let's try it and see. I'd rather not use my 1.2s if I don't have to, because that's gonna screw up the wow and flutter, I'm sure. All right, new belt is on. This one is at 113 or 226 internal circumference millimeters. I'm going to put the uh, the factory belt off to the side in case I got to reinstall it. Now let's take this in hand and see if this belt turns anything. It's running the counter. We'll go at it from this side. Oh, 
Oh good, it's running the transport. It's working. All right, now we do the shutoff lamp, I guess. Actually, let's do something else first. Let's see if it'll go into play. So I can get back in here and uh, manipulate this uh, loading belt. All right, it's in play mode, at least it should be. Just wanna make sure the capstans are contacting it. They're not capstans, the pinch rollers, and they are. Good. We might actually get this thing working yet. I would check the alignment one more time, but I don't care at this point. You might've seen this little lever popping back. That's because it was uh, going from uh, record mode to, or play mode into whatever, I don't know. I'm tired, guys. So very, very tired. Solder braid. Solder. And we're gonna pull this lamp out. This is a preemptive lamp change. It's not the easiest thing to do to get to this lamp, so we're going to change it now while we're in here. Sorry if you can't see, but I've got to be able to see, so. All right, it's loose. It's just a little stubborn because it's also glued in. Thanks, Nakamichi. Appreciate that. I'll just get the new lamp out here or try to. I ordered a bunch of them just in case one burns out with the soldering iron heat. That's been known to happen before. Let's get one lamp out here. Set it down right there. Put the rest of my shutoff lamps away for now so I don't lose track of them. When you have to order these things from Mauser, you don't exactly want to lose track of them, is what I'm saying there. I'll bend the leads a little bit, slightly, so I can thread the new lamp in there. And it did occur to me to go to LEDs for this, but uh, nah. I put that kind of effort in for something that had heads that looked like that. I'm gonna have to obscure this one again because there's some glue over the solder pad on that side. All right, it should be set. And I just noticed there's another little piece of plastic that broke off. Where the heck did that come from? Do I care? Not really. It fell out of the machine from somewhere. It looks wide enough to be a tape guide of some sort. But I am not seeing any tape guides that are broken. Or any plastic that's broken. But before I get too carried away with that. Let us check. see if that lamp is still good before I start putting things together. All right, the lamp's good. Now, 
just checking to see how close it is to the uh, shut off wheel. I think I want to bend it out just a little bit. All right, that should do just fine right there. Now we cut off our excess leads, and that should be good. It should theoretically be ready to put back together, but I kind of want to try and figure out where that piece of plastic came from. It's not from the front of the unit, I'll tell you that right now. At least I don't think it is. I do not see anything broken. I am very close to saying that's not a critical piece and I don't need to worry about it. I just don't see any problems here. I'm gonna say it's fine. I don't care. It's fine. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna put this back together now. Or rather, we will after I re-grease this, because this looks a little nasty. I'm not going to replace all the grease, like I said, but uh, the molly coat's out yet, so we might as well do some stuff. Yeah, it's just this stupid, crazy plastic. I just don't know where that came from. If any of you guys know or have an idea... That's it right there. Let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to worry about it. And no, I'm not pulling this whole assembly apart. I've spent enough time on it. All right, either that's good enough or I'm not caring <laughs> anymore. It should be good enough. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Everything else moves well. So, I guess it's time to start the laborious process of putting this thing back together. Wouldn't you say? Because that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I could throw a little molly coat on the end of that shaft too, couldn't I? Not too much though. Get you in here so you can see me put this uh, doohickey back in here a little bit. I'm not going to tighten it down because I need to put the door on first, obviously, but uh, I just wanted to get it settled. Right now I'm just trying to get this uh, ground wire to uh, situate itself properly, and there we go. Is that thing in its thread? I think it is. Yes, it is. Now we got to do some more cleaning because we got to re-grease the door mechanism. Our door is over here. There's a washer here somewhere. It has to go on that side, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to clean up the uh, pins on the door. I will grab the, uh, the driver's side hinge here, as it were. Or passenger side, if you happen to be in England. All right, ready for some fresh greasing. Molly coat is ready to go, and I'm going to put some on here. I'm going to put some on here. Probably not as much as it's on the pick right now. Good grief. Don't ask me how I got that much grease on there, but it happened. All right, it's in. I'm going to tighten this hinge down now. Or not this hinge, 
Well, yeah, this hinge. And hopefully I can get this to uh, go back together on this side now. All right, where is that little stupid C-clip? Damper back on, and then we can put the hinge back on, theoretically. All right, I'm going to say that's on. Feels like it's on. Grab my hinge here. I tell you what, I hope this works, but I don't know. I've been thinking about that head ever since I saw the condition of the dang thing. It's really, really bad. Or it was really, really bad. Now it's really, really... Well, it looks better, anyway. <laughs> Whether or not it'll sound better. Good question. Okay, what next? I need my screws here. Where are they? Good question. I put the wrong screw on this side. The one I used is for the uh, back plate. Great. I'll swap them. They're the same screws, they're just different lengths. So I got things back together here. At least I think so. Take note of this. This piece here has to go beneath the uh, pin on this side. I had to fix that again, but whatever. It's working. The grease is kind of still working its way around in the door mechanism, but uh, that's fine. There's a little bit more I could grease in here, probably, like uh, this hinge here, but uh, as long as I can get the door open and closed, I don't really care too much. But uh, yeah, this thing should be ready to go back together and start doing some testing. I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to try to run it outside the transport or not, just to or outside the deck or not, just to see if the transport is working, but uh, considering what the heads look like, I think I'd rather just throw this back together and uh, get on with my day. I'll probably regret doing it that way, but whatever. I'm going to put this back in the machine now, and we'll see if it works. All right, folks, it's back together well enough for testing, I think. We're going to try it and see if we get anywhere with it, but... Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm going to plug it in now. But before I do, the record cable is still outside the unit. I don't want to get that clipped back in until I know for sure I'm not going to be back inside this thing again. Because I could just see that breaking. Or that little clip breaking or whatnot. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. But we're going to try. Plugging in now. Okay, and I'm going to go power on. Okay, let's see what the transport does. Right into play. I just want to check and see if my shutoff light is working. It's hard to see in there. It must be because the uh, the machine is playing. Let's check the uh, uh, decent enough to take up torque. So, uh, taking my tape's life in its hands, and we're going to try it and See if it'll play a tape here. I'm going to try my path checker first. This may not be the best idea because uh, there's no felt pad on it whatsoever. I have to take up the, uh, the tape tension before it even goes in. I know I should make another one that, that actually still has the felt pad in place, but uh, 
This is the one I like to use with these dual capstan thingamajiggers. Okay, it looks like it's tracking right down there. Let's see. Where is me flash of light? It looks like it's tracking correctly. We've got something going on in the meters here. So, how about I pop this out, I'll fire up the home theater and we'll try to play some audio with it. Give me a second. All right guys, the home theater is fired up and we're gonna get to hear this thing for the first time. Well, I guess we kind of heard it earlier, but uh, it wasn't doing anything well at the time, so maybe it'll do well now. This is looking promising. It's working quite well. And it's sounding decent. I'm not going to say it's a real burn burner of a deck like the uh, the A and D unit was from last week, but uh, this is looking like I might have actually gotten away with this. I'm just going between modes now to see how well the brakes are working. We got this thing fixed. I can't believe it. Uh, let's see here. There's our eject. I would like to see if this goes into record mode. And I want to see what happens when I do that. And I've shut off the home theater because I don't want any stray signals getting in there. But uh, I'm going to use a blank shell for this. No tape. And I want to see if this thing goes into record. Sure does. Did you see that cable contract? It sure did. And it popped back out again. I'm in play. And now, record. Yeah, she's gonna work, I think. We got away with this one. So, here's the deal. Given how much fighting this transport took, I have decided I am not going to relamp these uh, meters or the uh, or the uh, controls here. They're all working right now, and I can easily get in here to do to do that later. I've got the lamps; that's fine. The main one I wanted to get done right now was the uh, the uh, thing for the uh, shut off. That's the word I'm looking for. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time to put this thing back together and, and well, I gotta align the thing yet. I gotta fix the azimuth because it's going to be off. There's no question about that, especially with uh, that pinch roller and that guide being off from the factory. Thanks, Nakamichi. But yeah, we can put this back together now and enjoy it, I think. But uh, first, we got to get this clip back in. Might as well do that on camera. We'll see how loud I curse in a second or five, if I curse at all. Oh boy. I got to deal with this ground wire as well. You can almost play a tune on that. I'm trying to get you a better view. 
the uh, tripod for the gimbal is in the way. All right, I think you can see me do this from this angle. So I'm gonna try to clip it back in. And it's never coming out this way again. The next time I do this, I'm just taking the whole thing off from here with the screw. I should have done that this time too, but uh, wasn't thinking. Here we go. Oh, it went in. It actually went in. I cannot believe it. Okay, I can't deal with this spring with you guys here, so I'm going to do that off camera, and then I'll just put everything back together. Time to check some wow and flutter. I'm going to try the uh, speed test tape I made with the Technics first, but uh, because this is recorded actually fast, I'm going to have to calibrate it slow on this display here. It's running at about, uh, oh, let's see, the Technics deck records 14 hertz fast, so we got to go 14 hertz slow. At least I think that's the way it goes. I did check it in the Denon DR-M3, and it is running at about uh, 2986 or something like that, so that's exactly what we have to calibrate for on this. But uh, I'm doing this mostly so I can, uh, yeah, see how that Technics deck is running for making speed test tapes. I'm going to probably do another video at some point in the near future or far future or sometime in the future where uh, I do a wow and flutter video and make these speed test tapes or whatnot or I don't know. I'm kind of out of it today so you'll have to excuse me for that but at least I'm not overtired. Okay that is running so I need to put the tape in. Let's see what we get here. And that is running way fast. It's probably like, uh, well, it's not way fast. It's too fast, but uh, it's kind of drifting down a bit. But Wow well, and Flutter looks pretty good, considering it's a uh, belt drive machine. Man, this is kind of all over the place. Maybe I should have done some work on the capstan motor. But yeah, I wanted to use the uh, Technics tape because uh, if I lose that one, it doesn't matter. If I lose my reference tape, that matters. So uh, let me try and adjust on this here. If I can get my tool in there. Too far. Well, we're getting closer. That actually might be it right there. Well, I guess maybe we should check this against the reference tape anyway. The machine did not eat the uh, Technics tape, so... But yeah, I'm going to be doing a Wild Flutter uh, video at some point here and making test tapes video and uh, yeah that's probably going to be after uh, I deal with the lingering wild and flutter issues on the uh, big A and D machine because uh, we need that one for that video. The idea is I'll make test tapes with both it and the Technics and we'll see which one is better for making them and then we'll use my Denon DR M3 as a control because that one's calibrated to exactly $29.99 and it stays there. So. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. All right, reference tape is playing. Should be dead on the money or close to it. We'll let the machine settle in. Remember, it started up fast last time, too. Should work its way down there. I'm not too thrilled about the way this deck is performing with the 
the speed ups and slow downs here. And it's still a touch fast. I'll tweak on it some more. And it's kind of drifting down yet. Yeah, this motor is not the most stable I've ever used. Could be needing a motor service. All right, I'm going to call it a, a day right there. It's working well enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all this stuff away. I'll align the azimuth off camera and then we'll do the record and play test. And hopefully it actually does record because I don't even know if it does that yet. If it doesn't, well, I guess we'll do another segment. Well, it never fails. There has to be drama with one of these things. I couldn't get it to reliably go into record mode, so I had to take everything back apart and uh, try to get everything figured out again. And initially I thought it was a lubrication problem. See, the issue was the uh, cam motor wasn't able to spin this all the way into uh, record mode. It did fine for playback, but not record. So I thought, okay, it's obviously a lubrication problem because uh, I didn't go in and relube all of the plastic parts and everything. I didn't even take off the cam gear. And uh, there was a lot of drama around that. What I tried to do was uh, I tried to work some uh, lube using dental picks. Let's see if I can demonstrate here. Down in the, into there, you can get access to the back side of the uh, cam gear through there. And you can also well, I tried to, anyway, at least get some more uh, lube down in through there, and that didn't work. So what I tried to do then was I tried to uh, get this thing off in order to lube back in there, and predictably, the C-clip on that one went flying. So what I had to do on that one was uh, I had to take one of my E-clips from the uh, Chinese E-clip pack, I had to uh, sort of spread apart the jaws a little bit so that it would work. Otherwise, it was too tight on there. But, uh, yeah, I managed to get that back on. Not fun. But uh, it appears that m the issue was uh, actually nothing to do with the lubrication at all. The issue was my belt was too tight, the cam belt. This is the one I installed. Let's see if I can figure it out in my head here. It was 120 millimeters internal circumference, two millimeters wide. And uh, yeah, I, the one that's in there now is 130 millimeters, two millimeters wide. And it, it appears that has done the trick. Let me see if I can get this to go. So yeah, it's much more reliably going into record mode now. It's going in every single time now. But yeah, fun times. I'm going to go and do my record and play test now after I get this back together, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of the way Nakamichi put this thing together. It's just not my favorite transport at all. Next time I will be more pro proactive in getting all this stuff lubricated, if there is a next time. I don't know if the models of Nakamichi that use this transport that I'm after next have this cockamamie thing going on here, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go change the description in my uh, last video to tell you the new correct size of uh, mode belt, because uh, the too tight one, the motor couldn't spin it, and there's a possibility that the uh, cam motor needs replacement on this too. I noticed there wasn't much left of the brushes, so... Uh, yeah, that could be the other, the other thing going on with it. But uh, like I said, I did not buy this to record on. I bought this to play. That's all I wanted it to do. But uh, as it turns out, the recording amplifier works just fine. It sounds fantastic. Apparently that head is not too far gone to record proper cassettes on. So uh, yeah, let me put this back together. I'll do the recording and then uh, yeah, you'll get, you'll get to see how it sounds. 
I recorded Tears for Fears' famous last words on it as a test recording. That's how I noticed that the uh, the cam gear wasn't always engaging, but uh, once I got it to manually engage, I did the, did a test recording using famous last words, and it sounded magnificent that way, so I'd like it to work. It's just that, uh, yeah, you gotta watch the belt size on that cam gear. Just one more little segment between now and the record and play tests. I got the azimuth adjusted, and predictably, this guy was way off. It's in a different city, or it was in a different city than it was supposed to be in. Basically, that uh, supply guide being misaligned from the factory, yeah, the head was just so far off it was crazy, but I got her dialed in now. And I discovered while I was doing the azimuth adjustment, there was a little bit of a playback channel or channel playback. And I don't know what I'm saying again. My brain's out. Again. There was a, a level imbalance between left and right channels. The left channel was slightly lower than the other, so I went in and tweaked on that. And I'll show you exactly where the adjustments are for that. Let's see if I can do it here. This is the left channel, and this is the right channel. So, I basically used my... Uh, Hans-Peter Roth 400 hertz tape for the first time and got her dialed in, so she should be good to go now. I hope so. I've got the eject button sticking now. It's nothing to do with the uh, sarcophagus. It's from me having to uh, pull the meter assembly off in order to try and route the wires again, because as it turns out, you cannot run the wires any other way than behind that... Uh, control panel there so that was fun and uh yeah the meter isn't quite or the meter uh block isn't quite lining up anymore so that's why that's sticking but uh, i don't care it works anyhow let's get to the record and play test we want to see how this sounds
So about what we just heard, I'm both surprised and not surprised. I'll try to explain here. I'm surprised in that the head condition on this thing gave me those results, and I'm not surprised in a way that uh, this really does sound like the BX150, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise to me, considering they're both from the same company, they're both probably the same heads. And yeah, it records about as well as the BX150 does, so take from that what you will. It's probably better recording than my uh, Sansui D905R, the three-header in the other room, but uh, keep in mind that's an auto-reverse unit that uh, I never was expecting to sound that great, so uh, yeah, this thing's about in the same ranking as uh, the other two-header Nakamichi I've got, so... Yeah, I'm going to have to try and find some of their three-headers in order to uh, see what I think about those. But uh, as far as this one goes, I am really not a fan of this transport at all. It's not as bad as I thought it was, but it's also not as good as I would like it to be. Let's put it that way. Is it the worst transport I've ever serviced? No, I don't think so. I think the uh, Sony transport used in the uh, TCK 55, 65, and all those models, I think that one's a little more finicky than this one, but uh, keep in mind that those Sony decks are full of metal parts. They're not full of plastic parts that break on you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go back on what I said earlier about the... Uh, the pinch roller height adjustment on there. Like when I tried to find a, a cheap way to do it, there is no cheap way to do it on one of these. I'm going to have to agree with everyone else who said that you absolutely have to have that alignment gauge in order to do one because uh, the uh, the cheap method I used with the feeler gauges and the calipers, that would have worked if and only if this had been aligned from the factory properly. This one was not aligned from the factory properly. The uh, supply side head guide was too far in, or the supply side tape guide, you know what I mean. It was pressed too far in from the factory. It was misaligned, leaving the azimuth to be way the hell out. I'm going to say this probably would have worked fine just as a playback and uh, recording deck on its own, like the tapes recorded on this machine never went to any other machines back in the day, but uh, yeah... If you would have stuck a tape recorded on this machine, on a different machine, based on the way it was aligned from the factory, it would have sounded terrible. I don't know if this is an isolated case or not, but I'm real irritated about that. You'd think that for a company that's renowned for their tape decks, they would have put a little more effort into this, but uh, clearly they didn't double check or triple check or whatever before this one came off the, uh, the factory floor. So yeah, you need an alignment gauge for one of these. At some point in the future, I'd like to buy one of those cheap Chinese alignment gauges to compare it with my good one, but uh, I don't have one of those yet, so I can't tell you whether or not those cheap ones are going to do the job for you. But uh, I'm just going to reiterate once more that if you're into Nakamichi and you want to try one of their decks, don't go for the classic transport. Go for the Sankyo transport. The newer stuff, like in the BX150, BX125, BX100, and I think the BX1 and 2 also use that transport, but uh, I may be wrong about that. As it is, I'm going to have to think long and hard now as to uh, what the next deck from this company is going to be for my 10,000 subscriber mark. I want to go high end, but it's uh, pretty much impossible to avoid this transport in their high end stuff. The Dragon uses it, ZX7, ZX9, they both use it, RX505 uses it, I do believe. I don't know what the CR7 uses, maybe that'll be the next one. But yeah, I am really not too keen on paying 800 bucks for something that uses this transport anymore, which I'm likely going to have to do if I want a 682ZX or something like that. So I'm going to have to think about this. Do I want to tangle with this transport again with a 682ZX? Right now I'm thinking no. Right now I'm thinking hell no. But uh, 
I might change my mind on that. It's really not that bad to deal with. I didn't break any parts that were critical, I don't think. Still don't know where that plastic piece came from, but uh, this one works. I'm happy with it, as it is now. Yeah, this could have turned out much worse than it did. I got ripped off on this machine, no question about it. These decks are not worth 300 bucks. Not for a basic 482 header. Yeah, I can't see myself putting through putting in this kind of work for something that's just a two header now. If I deal with this transport again, it has to be three heads and it has to be high end. I'm sorry. I'm not dealing with any more of this nonsense. And uh yeah, if you want 4000 bucks for your dragon, you're never going to see me buying it. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. I'm relatively okay with the idea of owning a dragon. It's just uh, not for the prices people want for them. I think my hard cap for uh, future knack decks is going to be a thousand bucks, and that's going to be it. That's already way more money than I want to pay for one of these machines, but uh, that's the way it is with uh, this machine and this company and uh, whatnot. Next deck I do on the channel might be a ZX-5 because I know that uses a Sankyo transport, not this one. But uh, yeah, like I said, gotta sit down and think about this. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today, guys. Next week, I think we'll be doing the uh, first video on the Pioneer receiver because I shot that video months ago at this point and it's gotta go up on the channel, but... Uh, I think two weeks after this video, you're going to see the follow-up video on the big A&D machine. And man, I really want to get the Wild Flutter dealt with on that machine. And I know what's wrong with it. I just got to find the time to get it fixed. Anyway, see you next time. No,